What's up, you beautiful bastards? I hope you're having a fantastic Friday. Welcome back to the Philip DeFranco Show. And today we're gonna do something a little bit different. There is no shortage of bad, no good, horrible news out there. It's really like you wake up and you get to choose your flavor. And it is important to talk about those things, but when that's all you talk about, it can really skew your worldview. So today I wanted to talk about something positive. And that's why today I want to talk about, feature, and share a story about a man by the name of James Harrison, a man you've most likely never heard of, which is incredibly unfortunate because it's believed he's helped 2.4 million babies. And to properly set up the story of James James Harrison, you should know that it starts in the 1950s. It starts with James Harrison himself almost dying. And I feel like it's a story best told from James Harrison himself. So I had Cecilia from our team reach out to him and I'd like you to meet James Harrison. I became a donor because my own life was saved with a blood transfusion back in 1951 before you were born. Uh, I had major chest surgery and it required 30 units of blood. When I uh, realized that the severity of it, and my father being a blood donor, I said to him that when I was old enough, which was 18 in those days, I would become a donor, and that I did. And donated whole blood uh, up until 1966, when the doctors there said they were, researchers had found this antibody, this anti-D antibody, uh, which they hoped would stop the miscarriage in mothers uh, wish, wishing to have a family. And what James is talking about there is in Australia during the 1960s, doctors were trying to figure out why thousands of pregnancies were ending in miscarriages. And it turns out these babies were suffering from hemolytic disease of the newborn or HDN. And to oversimplify the explanation, it's essentially a blood incompatibility issue between a mother and the fetus. And that incompatibility causes the mother's antibodies to attack the fetus and can result in brain damage, stillbirth, or miscarriage. And this usually happens in a woman's second pregnancy and it actually happens in about 17% of mothers in Australia. Doctors needed RHD negative blood and RH positive antibodies and when they found Harrison who had been donating blood for over a decade at that point they were essentially like hey we think your blood is magic can you help us out and he agreed to donate for the anti-D program as he explained to us and what we learned was a, a very James Harrison way and I said well I said, that must have come with the cross matching when I received the blood transfusion but irrespective uh, they asked me would I do the trial with them and I said yes they said we'll insure you for half a million dollars in case uh, anything adverse happens my wife said that was okay, she could use the money if necessary. <laughs> And it turns out people like James Harrison are incredibly rare. According to the Australian Red Cross, James is one of no more than 200 people in Australia that have the antibodies. And the anti-D program ended up giving their first dose of medicine to a woman in 1967, and to this day, that program still helps mothers. And from all the way back then to just about two weeks ago, he has continued donating his blood. It's why he's earned the nickname, the man with the golden arm. And according to the Red Cross Blood Service, Harrison holds the record for the most blood and blood plasma donations, a record that Harrison says he hopes someone else breaks one day. And the only reason James is no longer donating blood is that he now legally can't. And I've now retired because I've reached the grand old age of 81, which is the retiring age for all blood donors in Australia. I've got 1,163 donations out of my right arm and 10 out of my left arm. That's why I got the nickname of the man with the golden arm. No, I don't like men, I never once watched the needle go into my arm. I've looked at the nurses, I've looked at the ceiling. I looked at the people in the bed next door. It, it's good that to be able to return something to the community. They're just ordinary people who have just got ordinary red blood. Because they make one donation to save you three lives, and if they make plasma donations, they can save up to 18 lives. So, as I always say, the life you save could be your own, and an hour of your time could be a lifetime for somebody else. One of the things that really stands out about James Harrison, whether it be our conversation with him, any other interview he has done, he does not think that he is anything special. He has this mindset of, well, of course I'm going to do this. I mean, even before my blood was special, of course I was going to do this. It, it takes eight minutes or an hour. But this is the same guy that Robin Barlow, the RH program coordinator who found Harrison, said, every ampoule of anti-D ever made in Australia has James in it. He has saved millions of babies. I cry just thinking about it. So it made me incredibly happy to learn that on James Harrison's last day that he could legally donate blood, he got to meet some of the people he helped. It was a sad day on Friday when uh, I made my last donation and uh, they, they had a party for me with balloons, etc. And uh, about 10 mothers came in with their babies that they thanked me for, that, that, uh, uh, which was quite a humbling experience, really, and because in the past, I know one lady's had 13 children since she got the injections. So they'd probably blame me for the overpopulation. <laughs> <laughs> two and, three. 
And how I want to end this video, one, of course, I, I wanna honor James Harrison. I wanna give him props. I want to celebrate him. And at the same time, use this as an opportunity to encourage the future heroes. You may not be a one in 200 like James Harrison, but you can donate blood, you can donate plasma, and down in the links below, I will link to resources where you can find out where you can donate blood. It's actually really easy. Seeing James' story, hearing him out, it, it makes me realize that myself and many other people in this world, we're, we're very selfish. I think in, in part, it's, it's human nature to think about yourself and, and yours first. You you probably won't get credit for it, it won't make you famous, it won't give you more likes on Instagram or Facebook, but you'll be helping people. Same as you should hope other people do if you or anyone you care about gets hurt. There are a lot of ways we can make the world a little more awesome or just kind of take away some of that suck, and this is just one of them. And hopefully over the course of this series that I want to work on more, we, we can shine a light on other ways to do that and other people doing amazing things. But that said, if you like this video, you want us to shine more light on the good in the world, hit that like button if you're new here, hit that subscribe button, make sure you ring that bell to turn notifications on. Also share this video, I think James has, has an amazing story, an amazing message, and, and I think that some people just need to hear it. With that said, of course, as always, my name's Philip DeFranco, you've just been filled in, I love yo faces, and I'll see you Monday.